What's up everyone? Today I'm going to use four different junipers to illustrate the one thing that so many beginners get wrong when styling nursery junipers. All four of the junipers that I'm going to use as examples started off in the same batch and came from the same commercial nursery. These are uh, Juniperus chinensis sargentii shimpaku and basically Shimpaku, Kishu, they look pretty dang close, although there could be a slight difference. They've already been cut back once, a little bit over a year and a half ago, and I let them grow out and did not repot them. What I want to do first, basically, is to clean up enough of the foliage, particularly the foliage that's on the bottoms of the branches, so that I can actually see the structure. And I've done a little bit of that here, but I'm going to go ahead and and do some more of it here. So the purpose of this thinning is to really be able to see the structure of the tree. I don't want to take off all the interior foliage and I don't want to take off all the long whips quite yet. Most of the long branches on these trees probably will end up getting cut off, but for now I want to be able to see the structure of each branch so that I can make the decisions about which branches I'm going to cut off and which branches I'm not. So here's a great example of a bunch of foliage that's all coming out of one place. I'm going to start just by eliminating all the stuff that's on the bottom. And there was a cut here. That cut was made a year and a half ago. You can see it right there. The, all those buds came out as a result of that cutback. Or I should say they extended. And as I work my way down the branch, I'm just going to remove other stuff that's on the bottom. It's not that you never, like that you absolutely can't use growth that's on the bottom, but when a tree is relatively full like this, there's not really a good reason to use bottom growth as part of your composition. Here's a long, large branch with a lot of foliage on it, so I'm just removing all of these buds that are on the bottom. That's going to allow me to be able to see. Also picking off a few bits and pieces, but I'm not removing all of these little branches that are in here coming off the large branch because I want to be able to cut back to any portion of this branch, and that's the case for pretty much every branch on the tree. Now we can start to compare the two plants and they've, this is just a product of their natural growing habit. The growth that you see here has not really been modified other than when they were cut back after I purchased them from the nursery. And so the, the two are pretty similar, not, not identical obviously, but pretty similar. And so what we see, and this is very common in all kinds of nursery junipers, is that there are there's like a central leader and a bunch of large branches like all of these so i'm going to take one of these and style it like i've seen many beginners style these and i'm going to take the other one and i'm going to style it the way that i would style it and then i'm going to show you two more examples Whether it's Procumbens Nana or Shimpaku or some other variety, this is often what I see when I leave beginners to their own devices with a piece of nursery material. The obvious difference is that this is just four times the size of this as at this stage of its development. 
And the difference in what I did here is pretty simple. I cut off all of the large branches on this tree and I cut off some of the large branches on this tree, but tried to keep the rest and didn't utilize much in the way of the small branching. So basically all of the branches on this tree are the rough branches and I've applied wire to them. Now, in some cases, the wire, it's very difficult to bend rough branches that are there already. And those, in my mind, are just not usable branches. So from a beginner standpoint, oh, I wanna keep this foliage. Oh, I wanna make it a little bit bigger. But if you really come in and analyze the structure of the plant, there are numerous problems here. These branches are too big. They're sort of awkward looking. It's not really possible to harmonize the angles that they exit the trunk. So there's a little bit more chaos in the center of the composition than maybe you would want. And then overall, the size of the trunk compared to the size of the composition is much less impressive. If we use this technique and we remove all of the extraneous large pieces like I did here, here, and here, and, the, and here, and then concentrate just on the tiny shoots and rework the composition using those, you can create a much tighter composition that has a trunk that's more in scale with uh, what it should be for a bonsai. Rather than doing this all at once like I did in the first two plants, you can do it incrementally. and It's actually better for the plant. This plant was cut back last summer and you can see all of the big branches are still here, but they've had the bark stripped and so they're now gin. These little branches right here are the entire tree and you saw me do the same thing in one of the examples that I just showed you. Let's take a look at another one that I just styled and basically turned into a finished bonsai. So in case you haven't guessed already, the point I'm trying to make here is that you don't have to take the existing scale of the plant that you start with as the size of the plant that you end up with. And in fact, with nursery grown junipers like these, cut back the large branches, wait for smaller sprouts to come out, and then use those small branches to create small in scale branches and make your trunk look a lot bigger. Now, if you've watched a lot of the videos on this channel, you might recognize that tree. And now that I have them sitting next to each other, you might recognize the similarity in terms of the structure of this tree and this tree. This tree I've been working on for about 15 years, but it came from pretty much the exact same starting point as what we've been looking at here in the examples that I've used. The thing that this tree does really well is it stays in scale. None of the branches are too large, they stay close to the trunk, and they make the trunk and the entire composition look convincing. So that's what we've accomplished by using this technique and eliminating all the large branches. I did exactly the same thing to that about 15 years ago.
Now, if you like a twisty juniper rather than a straight up and down one, you're gonna to need to avoid nursery material altogether because obviously no work has gone into the actual shape of the trunk of these plants that I've been using as, as examples. We sell starters on bonsify.com. You can pick up some young junipers there that you can then grow out with a twisty trunk, but this concept of the branching is the same. Once you have the trunk the size you want, you need to make the branches as small as possible. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you next time.